book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. Uh, if you have it, please say amen. amen. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, lovers, and doers of his word. So good to have Elakia back with us. Amen. Man, we've been in combat zone in Grenada, Mississippi. It is a faithful saying. But if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot, he cannot deny him. Said. Our subject uh, this morning is, if you suffer with him, you will reign with him. If you suffer with him, you will reign with him. For the past few weeks, we <clears throat> have been talking about giving him the glory and giving him the praise. And if we were to give him these two things, the glory and the praise, then he would give us the victory. We noted it when we talked about walking around the wall of Jericho and how on six days, for six days, Joshua and the children of Israel walked around that wall. And then on the seventh day, they walked around seven times and blew the trumpet. And at the blowing of the trumpet, the walls came down and God gave them the victory. The record indicate that when praises go up, the blessings are going to come down. Uh, that in our lives, that you and I must recognize that praise is a weapon that can be used against the enemy in spiritual warfare. The idea is the devil knows this, and so he will discourage us. Uh, he will make it difficult for us. He will push us away from praise services. Uh, he will have us distracted when it comes down to praising. Uh, he will fill our minds with all kind of things to keep us away uh, from the reality that you and I need to praise the Lord. Praise is important. Praise is essential. Uh, praise in itself has power because anyone who is grateful attracts the attention of the giver. Anyone who is grateful becomes a magnet for others to give them more. My brothers and sisters, I don't know how you feel about it, but have you ever given anyone a gift and they seem ungrateful? And in your mind and in your heart, you didn't say it out loud, but you were thinking, you ain't giving nothing else for me. But when you gave something to someone who seemed so excited, expressed gratitude, and showed appreciation for your gift, then you began to think and to wonder how you can do more to bless them again. This is the same when it comes down to God and us because God continues to bless us over and over again. But how many of us never stop and tell God, thank you? How many of us go, amen, and act as if uh, it's no big deal. God should bless me anyway. But when you are ungrateful, you, you attach a spirit to you that becomes a repellent to the miracles of God. In other words, you should not be the one who conducts their affairs as if everybody owe you something. 
when we begin to take God for granted, then we become a repellent for what God will want to do in our lives. And so I encourage you uh, to uh, become a immediate praiser, to become a constant praiser, to become a sincere praiser, to show gratitude, to show appreciation all the time. And this ought to be resident in the life of a believer. Every believer ought to have a mindset that said, God, I thank you. I want to thank you because you have been so good to me. Uh, you've been good to me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Uh, yeah, I, I don't deserve your goodness. Uh, in fact, I don't even deserve to be alive. But your, your grace and your mercy have brought me through this. And I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you. And we need to learn how to appreciate God's blessings all the time. We ought to appreciate God's blessing in people because sometimes we take people for granted. We take people that we live with for granted. We take people that God has let to, to be in our lives a long time for granted. But if you got a living mother, you got a living father, you better be thanking God right now. Because somebody wish that their mother was here. Somebody wish that their father was here. Somebody wish their loved one was still here. And we act crazy living in the same house with them. Y'all ain't going to help me here. We must learn how to be grateful and appreciate God's goodness to us. And, and I know this is not Thanksgiving, but it's always a good reminder uh, because I believe sometimes we get all giraffish at times, get all high in the air. You know, we, we just act kind of strange at times. But if you humble yourself, God can do more with somebody that's humble than he can with somebody that's haughty. He can give to someone who know where it comes from than somebody who act like they got it on their own. I want to remind you, it wasn't your education that did this. It wasn't your insurance policy that did this. It wasn't how smart your big head was that got this for you. It was God's grace and God's mercy. In fact, Brother Geechee, the songwriter, said, I made it this far by the grace of God. He asked the question, how did I make it? It was the grace of God. How did I take it? It was the grace of God. Why ain't you crazy? It was the grace of God. Why didn't you just pull the gun out and shoot your brother? It was the grace of God. I thank God for the grace. I wish I had a witness in here. It ought to be at least 23 people that thank God for the grace of God this morning. Hallelujah for the grace. All right, all right. Well, it is great that has brought us this far and it is grace that's going to lead us home but yet in the midst of this and we are realizing again as a rekindling of the fire inside of us related to this grace began to ignite and we take upon the attitude of gratitude and appreciation for what God has done that no matter how well we know God has been good to us the devil is still busy <laughs> Let me, let me just put this out here right now. The devil busy right now. <laughs> he don't take no vacation. He, he doesn't take any lunch breaks. The devil doesn't take 15 minute smoke breaks. The devil is busy right now. Oh yeah, he working overtime. He doing things behind the scene. He, he's trying to take God's grace away from the activity of our lives. And he can do this when he start to mess with your mind. <laughs> can I preach a little bit up in here? You see, the battle began and ends in the mind. Uh, that's why we must put on the mind of Christ. We must be renewed in the spirit of our mind. In fact, the Bible said to let 
this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ said, Lord, no matter what I have to endure, I'm not going to turn loose. No matter what I have to be inflicted with, I'm not going to turn loose. And the devil is today trying to mess with somebody's mind right now. Look at somebody and tell them your the battle's in your mind. It's in, it's in your mind right now. He's trying to tell you that God ain't for you. He's trying to tell you that God don't love you. He's trying to tell you you're worthless and you're just a, a piece of nothing. But I came to pronounce and decree and declare up in this place that the devil is still a liar. And before I believe what the devil said, I'll stand on God's word. I am somebody. I can be somebody. And God is not through with me yet. I wish I had a witness in here that would thank God for that right now. Hallelujah. God ain't through with you yet. Touch three people and tell them God ain't through with you yet. Get it in your mind. Get it in your mind. Get it in your mind. I say you got to get it in your mind that God ain't through with you yet. God got work for you to do. God got a blessing in store for you. God got a miracle with your name on it. And he should have killed you when he had a chance. But it's too late now because I know who I am. Oh, God, I didn't mean to go all down that low. <laughs> let, me, let me get back to this mess. Y'all, I'm headed there. Give me, give me about 10 more minutes. Get, this is important here because I believe that every saint need to know, uh, yeah, that, 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 that we got to suffer. Hmm. We, we, we got to suffer. We got to go through something to get there. And anyone that understands the value of the journey, <laughs> Hallelujah. See, a lot of people, uh, 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 Ella Joy, they, they want to get to the mountaintop, but they don't appreciate the valley experience. The, the journey to get to the top means you got to go through the valley. And it's somebody in here today that you in the valley right now. You in the valley in your relationships. You in the valley in your finances. You in the valley in your mind but the good news is God gonna see you through that valley I heard him say yeah though I walk through the valley hallelujah he said through the valley he didn't say to the valley he said I'm walking through the valley God said I am with you even in the valley hallelujah to the lamb Elkanah, this is the pressing way because each of us must suffer Along the, how much time I got y'all it's already late you see uh, we got to suffer that mean number one you have to deal you have to deal with some stress yeah every now and then you got to deal with some stress and stress can get in your body stress can get in your muscles stress can get all in your neck stress will get all in your back stress will get in your kidneys having nightmare can't eat at night all because you under stress and stress can break you down but God came in here to tell you today that the battle is not yours it's the Lord and I want to introduce you to somebody that can de-stress you and his name is Jesus God help me I feel the Holy Ghost here oh yeah so stress comes with this and then not only stress but then there come some undue accusations every now and then people will lie on you let me see the hand that never been lied on in here and let me see hold your hand up because you done lied on some folk too look at you look at your hand up you ain't just been lied on you lied on some why you put your hand down now you know you lied on some people y'all ain't got to help me in here hey amen you done lied on me i done lied on you but god has been good to us and even in spite of our craziness he keep on blessing us. ain't that good oh lord some undue accusation everybody have to deal with it every now and then persecution and affliction 
is going to come. And every time and then we have to deal with this type of suffering that every saint had to prepare for. It's the kind of suffering that says not for me, but for the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. I wish I had somebody with me here. It's not for me, but it's for the glory of God. Look at somebody say, it ain't for me. The reason I'm suffering, it ain't for me. It's for this man named Jesus. Because he promised me if I just be quiet, he would fight my battle. If you just hold your peace, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody in here, you need to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle because it ain't for you. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, God promised if I suffer with it, I'm going to reign with it. I'm so glad that every pain in my body is not for me. Every lie I've been lied on. It really ain't for me. Everybody talking about me. It ain't even for me. I've been misunderstood. But it ain't for me. It's for the glory of my Savior. Ain't the Lord all right? I learned how to suffer. Sister Miller, I said I learned how to live right. Because I heard... The Bible said, if I suffer with my Savior, I would gain eternal life. Touch somebody, tell them hang in there. The reason I can tell you to hang in there, because he may not come when you want him to. He may not show up when you wish he will. But after a while, and by and by, he will show up and make everything all right. That's the reason, Sister Trina, I can rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. I can rejoice in the God of my salvation. I can lift my hand in the middle of the frustration. I can lift my hand in the middle of the pain. I can lift my hand in the middle of the regret. Cause he promised he would never leave me alone. I get the guy to get out of here. But early one Sunday morning, he got out the grave with all power in his hand touch somebody by the hand tell them hang in there you may have to cry but hang in there you may have to moan but hang in there it may hurt you but hang in there weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning touch somebody else find you a good neighbor Tell him, hey neighbor, if you hang in there, he will, he will, he will touch your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get out of here. My time is up. I feel all right. I feel the joy bubbling in my soul. I feel the Holy Ghost cause somebody is at that point I can't take no more I can't deal with this it's too heavy for me the burden is wearing me down but in the middle of the battle you got to learn how to keep lifting your hand you have to learn how to keep telling them thank you you have to learn how to keep leaning on the law and if you lean on him i promise you he won't let you fall if you lean on him i promise you he won't let you go down if you lean on him 
I promise you, after a while, he'll pick you up. I promise you, if you just stay there, when you can't see your way, if you stay there and walk by faith and not by sight, I don't have to see it, but I know he's able. I don't have to know it. I believe in my heart that out of all the things I've been through, I still got joy and the best is yet to come. I got to get out of here, but touch somebody and tell them keep suffering. Keep hanging in there. It may be your children. It may be your spouse. It may be your job, but you got to stay there. Somebody got to carry the load. Somebody got to bear the burden. I said, somebody got to say, Lord, it's me, oh Lord. If you need somebody, hear my, hear my, send me. I'll carry the load. Send me. I'll take the battle. Send me. I'll do it all by myself. And Jesus picked up the crow, headed up Calvary. Ain't he all right? He marched up Calvary Hill, saying, Here am I. Send me. I'll go. He died on that crow. Do you know he died? He died. He died. He died on the crow for my sin. But early. Y'all gonna make me have church by myself. Do you love him? Somebody shout yeah. Shout yeah. Have you been saved? Have you been born again? Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Yeah! Woo! I tell you, he's all right. The man is all right. I tried for myself. I know he's he. I know he's able. I know he's able. I know he's able. I know he's able. I said, I know he's able. Help me say it right now. I know he's able. I know he's able. I tried him for myself. I know he's able. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You got to trust when all hell break loose. You got to trust it, though it hurts. You got to trust it when you can't see your way. You got to trust it. He's able. I'm gonna quit now. I'm gonna quit now. It's late in the evening. And the sun going down. Everybody, just lift your hand right that way, y'all. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. We got to suffer. But if we don't suffer, we can't reign with it. If we don't suffer. Oh, glory to God. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned how, how to, to suffer. suffer. For the chest. Cause if I suffer, I hear Mother McConnell saying it's on you, sir. I'll get I hear him saying it's on you. Eternal life. Somebody got to get in the gap. Somebody have got to hold it together. When I see Jesus, when I see Jesus 
Hey. Hey. Amen. That's right. Somebody get with this brother right here. Help this brother. When I, when I see, see Jesus. Jesus. Hey. Hey. Amen. All of my oh, burdens. All of my burdens. All of my problems. problems. We'll be over. Woo. When I see Jesus. Hey. Somebody going through right now. Amen. If you're the one going through, just lift your hand right there. Let me tell you something. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's got to be all right. God didn't bring you this far to leave you where you're at. Sometimes we lose the very people that we love the most. And I know there's some bereaving families up in here now. And you've lost somebody real close to you. Some of you lost your father. Some of you lost your mother. Some of you lost your own children. But I'm telling you one thing I do know. Everything has a reason. And everything has a cease. And the Lord gave me a worry, Mother Dorsey. Because it came down on me. When I went down to be with Mother Brown this week. My mind fell on Daryl again. I said, Lord, Daryl. It's like I never had a chance to really grieve the loss of Daryl. Losing my sister, losing people close to me. And the Lord spoke a word to me. He said, you got to walk in the light. Don't walk in the shade, son. You got to walk in the light. Because if you walk in the shade, you're going to get discouraged. Brother Walker, if you walk in the shade, you're going to get depressed. But you got to come out the shade and walk in the light. I said, Lord, how do I do this? He said, you got to trust me, son. You got to suffer along the way. And every now and then, since the pressure of God, God will put us in a suffering season. It's many saints in here today in this suffering season. Yes, Lord. But it's going to be all right. Yes, Lord. The good news is it's just a cease. Yes. Look at somebody telling me it's just a cease. It's just a cease. It ain't going to be always. It's just a cease. It's not going to last always. It's not going to be always. It's just a cease. And the Lord called your dad at home because it was time. He had been through enough. He had suffered enough. It was time. But I learned the hard way that my time ain't God time. Oh, y'all done hung up on me in here. I said, my time ain't God time. Because if it were left up to me, it would never be time. But God know how much we can take. Look at somebody and tell them, God know how much you can take. Brother Scott, God know how much you can take. And when he said, that's enough. It's enough. Woo, I'm telling you. He can say, peace, be still. In the middle of the storm, when the waves are high, and the wind is blowing, and the rain is falling, he can say, peace. Be still. At the very moment. I know it's late, y'all. It's almost 11. At the very moment that you want to give up, you're stepping. We getting ready to pray. We getting ready to pray. We getting ready to pray. But the Holy Spirit is in this place here today. If you suffer with him, you can reign with him. Yes, yes. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. They won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. And Lord, now, here we are at the close of this service. We're here today. We're here today. Some hearts are hurting. 
Some people carry heavy burden. People still dealing with the grief process. But Lord, we know you made the promise. If we just suffer with you, we must admit we don't understand this stuff. We don't understand how you have to break us to make us. We don't understand how you have to hurt us to heal us. We don't understand how you have to bring us down to nothing to make something out of us. Lord, we have to ask sometimes, why? Why us? Why this? Why now? We're human. But you understand and you can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the midst of the suffering, you've made the promise that even if we suffer with you, we can reign with you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for being a battle axe. Thank you for being there for us. When everybody else walked away, when the support of family and friends fell down, you stayed with us, Lord. And God, we thank you right now. Thank you for this young man right here, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You ain't through with him yet. Thank you, Lord. For everybody in this building that's going through, thank you for this word of encouragement that we are going to make it. We're going to make it one step at a time. And God, we glorify you in Jesus' name. Help us now to stand on your word in Jesus' name. Just hug somebody and tell them if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. We'll see you. We love you in Jesus' name.